Hi, I'm David Wiegener. I come to you all the way from Christchurch, New Zealand. The date is the 11th of the 11th of 2017, a Saturday, if you want to look it up. I bring you chess daily other than that of Sundays for obvious reasons and it's also shared on Twitter. Whatever that means, I do not know, but I've got some followers there. So, today I bring you a game from 1980. Gary Dooley gained his second and final norm for the International Grandmaster title when the opponent arose in the event organised by the USSR Central Chess Club in his home city, Baku, March 29 to April 18, 1980, etc. So here we go. Gary got um, first with 11.5 out of 15 against a very strong field. And Balyevsky was second with 11 out of 15. But this game took place in round 11 and it's really quite a cool game. It involves Gary sacrificing a piece. No chocolate fish to work out which piece it was because we're going to find out soon anyway. This game is between Gary as white and the King's Indian opening Round 11 against the woman world champion of the time, Maya Cherbonites. So this is round 11. She was trailing or tailing the two leaders until her encounter with Gary in round 11. So here we go with this game and it's my um, interpretation thereof of it. Now other players are going to have a different interpretation of it but here we go. D4 and I'd better get the mouse out of the way because it's actually on the playing field isn't it? So we're going to get off the player from the field. C4 G6 I met twice this week one of the top all blacks of all time. What a great bloke. Anyway, here we go. Knight C3. We're heading down to King's Indian, of course, as I've mentioned. And this fastens the idea of black not playing something like the Grinfell defence with D5. Usually about move 4 or so for black. So D6. Now we're into King's Indian waters quite clearly. Knight f3 castles, bishop e2, e5, uh, a reasonably normal move for black to play. Bishop e3 and queen e7, and now Gary plays the lockdown move of the center, locks the center with d5. Knight g4 is quite a reasonably normal sort of response. Bishop g5, f6, bishop h4, played by Gary h5 now h3 so the knight hops back to h6 knight d2 c5 some words about Maya um, is all of a sudden starting some activity on the queen side knight f1 knight f7 Book gives, or Gary Kasparov gives, knight a6, knight c7, bishop d7, etc. Preparing for a6 and b5 break. So that's a plan, a wee mini plan, or concept in that regard. Okay, but what has to have their game too? So knight f7 came, g4. This Bishop g4 here is given as 
two ex exclamation marks. Maybe Gary gave himself two exclamation marks. But book here gives two exclamation marks to bishop g4. Doesn't look like it though. Now comes g5 and Gary just goes bishop c8. Fair enough. Rook c8. And here is the point in which I said you cannot win a chocolate fish for because white now plays knight e3 giving up a whole piece particularly that of a bishop on h4 Maya takes the feed and knight f5 follows attacking the queen with check with the knight if it takes on e7 and then the rook thereafter etc. Maya plays queen d8. Now Gary plays an obvious um, queen g4 threatening at this point a blatant queen g7 checkmate which is met with knight h uh, knight g5, knight h4, rook c7, knight f5, a6, h4. Now reopening the file with the knight blocking it here on g5. So this reopens. So bad would be here because of queen g7 checkmate and here where white would be able to get their piece back with a huge advantage with d e6 so Maya plays knight h7 now comes rook g1 threatening if you like knight g7 and the queen and the rook are stopping the rook from recapturing the knight after knight g7 so Maya plays queen f8, fair enough. Still playing reasonably alright, but now watch king e2, rook a7. Now a lot of moves happen here. a4, b6, queen h5. King h8, rook g6. Quite knobbly, really. Now rook. AG1 joins in their fun like we've said before on here that I've said before Gary is one to make sure that all his pieces can take part in the fun and the downfall of Black's position Rook AB7 Queen G4 Rook A B C7 gets confusing doesn't it Rook g2, why? Rook b7, maybe trying to save time on the clock. King f1, rook a7, king g1, rook f7, knight e2. Well, here we go. This is exactly what I just said. Why not? Did Gary all of a sudden realise that he's got a knight on c3 that's doing sort of like only a little bit of visual on the square b5 I don't know but it sort of looks like he thought to himself probably not re really of course oh hang on I've got a knight on c3 I might as well make that um, more active queen c8 f4 this is threatening to move this pawn forward etc because the knight cannot come in here anymore and other things too b5 Gary recaptures recaptures back and recaptures it almost looks like a little bit odd that that's happened and occurred to me at least rook b7 now we could play this here now and white would get an exchange for the knight and but also be a piece down still so white would end up with giving up two pieces for one rook so black would stand better h5 as promised knight f8 now here comes the final move and 
number four, White played their next move. Meyer resigned. Now I'm going to leave it here for you to decide why did she resign. For you to make up your own lines. But I could give you some clues. There's even Queen H8 check as possible here. That's quite cool. And so I'm just going to show you Queen H8 just for fun. And I'm going to turn the engine on. And this is a Saturday version. So I'm just, the computer gives us. Okay. But I could try this. So that, and it's still one for black, um, white. Because obviously King F7 is no good because a Rook G7 or Queen G7 is really, really good. Uh, so we'll go here, okay? Go here and then we'll go Rook G8, check, King F7 and then we've got this move which I want to play this. But the computer is ignoring that move and playing Rook C8. But I prefer... Oh, I can't do what I was going to do. Because if I go Knight D6, it's a big blunder. Watch. It's from 7.44 to way in Black's favour now by 5.08. So that was a blunder from David Wiegener if he wanted to play that. So we'll go King F7. Rook C8. You can have some fun with this position. New main line. And then we've got... Um, White is in serious um, winning territory here with uh, 7.46 points as opposed to Black's position is lost. No good here. We'll end here with this. Knight check and if King moves, Knight takes Rook and the rest would be history. Thank you very much for um, watching this session just under the 15 minute mark but it is a Saturday so I digress on a Saturday thank you hope you enjoyed that game bye